In this lesson, we'll take a look at creating our texture maps. So we need a couple of different kinds of maps coming out of ZBrush to be able to reproduce this. We need a normal map to be able to show the detail that we have on here, the raised detail. And we also need a color map to show the color texture. So for the color map, we'll go to the highest subdivision level and the UVs will carry through. And then we'll go to our texture map subpalette and we want to create new from polypaint. So we'll go ahead and click on that button and that creates a new texture based on the UV layout that we created with our UV master. Now to actually export this, we'll go ahead and clone it, which will send it over to the texture palette. And then I'm actually going to flip it in the vertical direction before we export. Now there are settings in ZBrush in certain areas and we'll look at those where it'll automatically flip it. Here we'll do it manually and then we'll go to export. We'll navigate to our project files and you can choose what kind of uh, what kind of an image you want to actually create. I'm just going to choose a Photoshop image, a PSD, and let's call this something like dagger color. And we'll go ahead and save that. It's going to tell us that it has a material index embedded within the pixel, which is from the actual jewel here. Do we want to save it as a separate channel? Sure, let's do that. Okay, so we've now saved out the color texture. Let's create the normal map. So for the normal map, we need to go down to the lowest subdivision level. So we'll go down to level one. And let's go to normal map. And here are the default settings. Let's go ahead and say create normal map. All right, so now you can see if I hover over this, you can see the normal map and you can see the detail sort of recreated there uh, on that map. Now to actually export that map, we can clone the normal map. That'll clone it again over to our texture palette. We'll flip it in the vertical direction and let's export it. And we'll call this one dagger color. Oops. <laughs> we don't want to call it dagger color. Obviously we want to call it dagger normal. That would make more sense. So let's go ahead and save that. And so we've got a color texture and a normal map exported out. Now there are ways that we can speed up this process, uh, but first let's go ahead and export this geometry as well. So we've got the two maps, let's export the geometry. And instead of saving as, we wanna go to export. Again, we'll go to our project files and let's just call this something like dagger low and we'll save it out. And it saves it out as an OBJ. Now, if you have a lot of assets that you need to save out maps for, or if you have a number of maps that you want to just save out, you want to be able to save what it is that you're doing and kind of repeat it, the multi-map exporter is a great way to do this. And we have training on this if you want to get into more depth on the multi-map exporter. But you can see here, I can choose what kind of uh, textures to actually create. So I can create a normal map. I can create a texture from a poly paint. So skipping that step, I can also create um, an ambient occlusion map and a cavity map. So maybe I just want to create those two. We can also choose to export the mesh at the same time. Okay. We also have options for exporting maps for all the visible subtools, and we can merge maps if we want to as well. If we have multiple subtools that need to be on the same map, we have a map size here, and then you can see a button here for flipping vertically, which is you know, what we had to do earlier. And under here we have the export options. So we can choose the file names. This will give you these sort of suffixes that based on the type of map that it is or it is that you're creating. You can use multiple UV tiles and then those are des designated down here. And then we have kind of the default uh, formats here. So we can come in here. Let's say we want to create an ambient occlusion and a cavity map. And so the, the settings for those are under here. And if you want to modify any of those under cavity, or ambient occlusion, uh, you can certainly do that. But once you've got everything set for all the texture maps that you want to create, all you have to do is go up to create maps. So we'll hit that. It'll bring up our option to name it. And so you can choose, and let's just choose something simple, like dagger. We'll save that. And that's going to give you an indication of what it's actually saving out and what it's actually calculating at the moment. Okay, so all of those maps are done. So let's take a look at where those are. So let's jump into that folder. And if we take a look at this and 
up here, these are the, the assets that we just created here. So the first ones were the color and normal maps that we exported manually. The next one was the OBJ, and it saved out this sort of bitmap as well as a uh, material. So it saved that all out as well. And then these two are the ones that we saved out with the multi-map exporter. You can see all we put in was dagger, uh, but it used kind of the name of the subtool as well. And then it also included the amine occlusion, cavity map, and then also the U and V tile designation there, Z zero and zero, because we're only using one tile. So that's where all those are located. And those are going to be in your project files with the rest of your ZBrush files. So once we've got the maps that we have uh, needed, uh, that we need created, then the next thing that we can do is actually set things up in our game engine. In this case, we're going to be using Marmoset Toolbag to set things up. It's a great way to kind of preview things uh, instead of putting them into a, a complete game engine. We can just see what it's going to look like in real time. And there's a lot of options for how we want it to look.